Hello, hello, and welcome into another Let's Stream of Civ 6 with Montezuma next up in the list. Uh, Montezuma is, I believe, regarded as one of the better leaders for Deity. Um, he is quite strong in the early game, and that's usually what sets you apart. So uh, let's go over his abilities and what I think about him. Um, gifts for the Tlantani? Tlantani? What is it? <laughs> I'm sure chat will correct me momentarily. Tlantani. Perfect. Uh, so you get luxury resources, provide an amenity to two extra cities. Usually luxuries give it to, what, four, I think? Um, so we, you'll get some extra uh, amenities spread out across your across your cities. And then military units gain plus one combat strength for each different luxury resource improved in the Aztec lands. It's not bad. Like, honestly, if you, if you consider it, if you, can, if you can come up with even five amenities... Um, having an extra five combat strength, sometimes unique units only give like extra five to 10 combat strength in certain situations. So this is actually pretty useful, um, especially on deity when you're looking for any possible advantage you can get. So this alone is pretty darn good. Extra amenities are always good no matter what you're trying to do. Um, and some combat strength helps kind of throughout the campaign. Um, Legend of the Five Sons. Spend builder charges to complete 20% of the original district cost. That's really, really good. That's really, really good, guys. Like, when we get the extra charged builders, one builder can insta-complete districts, which is crazy. Um, so Legend of the Five Sons, also super, super good. And that couples well with his Eagle Warriors, who, when they capture another civilization's military unit, they have a chance to turn them into builders. So if you war early, you can get a bunch of builders, get some districts built. Life is good. Uh, I'm not even going to try this one, but it is a building unique to the Aztecs, provides an amenity, so more amenities. Uh, and then faith and great general points. I don't really care about the faith and great general points. I don't think we're going for a religious kind of victory. Um, we'll probably just go after a domination victory. Um, Although you don't have to. You don't have to see Montezuma and think, I have to take over the world. Um, you can use his strong early game to propel you into districts and do whatever you want with them. Um, but he is he is quite strong, quite good. I don't know if this goes in... Does this go in an entertainment complex? Because if it does, it's kind of like, meh, meh. But um, because of the extra amenities, you can either go super tall or super wide. Um We'll just, we'll just play to whatever the map does for us. And in order to pursue an achievement, I think we're going to choose for the first time to play on a standard size map. So I usually go small just because games end a little bit quicker and it winds up being a little bit more manageable. Um, but we, we can try for a standard size um, going after domination victory. Um, if domination doesn't seem reasonable and we're in a good enough position, we might just pivot to space. But that should that should feel and sound pretty much the same. Uh, so yeah, we'll do continents, we'll do a standard map, and uh, we will do our balanced start position, and we'll see what Montezuma has to offer. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Tlatoani Montezuma. Keep your eagle warriors happy and fed, and they will forever fight for your cause. As your Aztec empire unfurls across the land, you will never want for people to raise your walls, for you will be blessed with new loyal workers as you conquer those around you. Go forth. Hootsli Apuchli calls. Hootsli Apuchli. Cool. Perfect. Should also be noted that Montezuma is, uh, I believe, the original DLC. Uh, if you pre-purchased Civ Six, I think you got him for free um, or something like that. But I, I don't think he's Mommy. in the vanilla standard uh, game. So if you're looking for him, you may have to pay to find him. Alrighty. Um, that 94 gen, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome welcome to you today. Alright, so let's see. Starting position wise. Um, so we have grassland. So we're going to have lots and lots of food. Um, we need to be concerned with production. 
and I would 100% of the time move over to the river. Uh, we've got better starting tiles in the horses and cattle uh, than like the cotton. Um, the cotton's okay. We, we get some extra gold and stuff from that, which is which is fine. Um, but luxuries, as far as opening array of tiles, are are weak. Um, and I've talked about that ad nauseum. So let's see. So we're either going to move here or here with our settler, which means could go here for some extra vision, but we're going to get most of that anyways. So let's just do this. Oh man, double cattle. And, and a continuing coastline. So, pretty interesting. I think I will settle here. Um, the difference between these two settling is, do you want to start with horses in your opening, or do you want to start with just cattle? Uh, horses, obviously, definitely better. But because this coast continues, I want to kind of avoid as many... Oh, these crabs look cute. Uh, I want to avoid as many useless sea tiles as possible. So even though we're going to give up a production, we're going to trade a production early, um, I think settling here is better. Um, we can also pivot next turn and do something else if we get some more information up there. But this is my inclination, is to go there. Uh, and your, your settler does have better vision than your warrior. So... Um, and this definitely looks like a uh, god of the open sky because we have three pastures already. So this is three extra culture, so extra border growth. It looks, really looks like a pretty strong capital. We've got a good uh, industrial zone here if we want to crank out units. Um, we could do industrial zone, commercial hub, and then a campus somewhere. Something like that would be all right. So, yeah, so we're looking at like a turn two founding here. And we'll go towards the goody hut. Um, I think I'm actually going to move here just so we are making the best possible decision we can. Um, because we can go get the goody hut next turn by just going straight across. But I want to see this. Okay. Uh, and more tea. So we have more luxuries. So, so we could move here as well and have a very similar opening. But I don't know that that's wholly necessary. You're gonna mostly work tiles within your first couple borders. Um, your first couple hexes is what I mean. So I think this is perfectly fine. The reason I would consider moving here is just to again have more and more land, but I don't think that's necessary. And I would also like to grow into the horses quickly because these are gonna be among our first tiles. We're gonna have not the greatest production, but we'll have good growth, which makes for a good capital because we'll be able to spam out some settlers um, and have good good growth to balance that back up. So let's just found here. Bloop. Uh, and I also want to investigate is... Yep. So that is a... It's an interesting way to get faith and some great general points. Um, we usually don't get a lot of great generals or admirals. Um, I'm bad at building encampments. Winds up not really playing into my strategies so much. Um, but if we do need these, even though we already have better amenities, uh, we will get extra amenities, which is which is nice. Um, we've got more tea up there. Yeah, we, we're... we're not seeing anything obvious as far as where we're going for a second city location, but uh, so far I kind of like it. Very grasslandy. All the grassland things. So, per use, let's start with archery. Um, and up here, once we have our code of laws, we'll go probably craftsmanship into state workforce because what we want to do is spam out some Eagle Warriors. I think the Eagle Warriors, the only unique unit that you actually start with, even with uh, Sumeria and the War Carts, you start with a regular warrior. Um, so, uh, and then we could also build another Eagle Warrior. You can see that the production is considerably higher than a Slinger. Um, and it would be nice because we would have the op opportunity. Now, I don't think this ability does work against uh, barbarians, right? I think it's just other civs. So we actually have to fight somebody with our eagle warriors in order to get free builders. Um, but I still think just slinger for the boost into archery, having ranged units early, 
a little bit boring to not go with those, but uh, having having a second unit faster, I think, is the way we want to go. And of course, we want to change this. This is not an acceptable first tile to work. Um, even the extra two turns. So we're trading a bunch of gold, but we really just need to grow. We need to grow. Hopefully they'll add the horses. Then we can grow, grow, grow. Add in some other things as well. But yeah. I mean, this is interesting for the money, but uh, yeah, I, I just think even growing two turns faster is better. So, all right. So that's our start. It's not too bad. I have some... Some opportunities, no no great campuses, no mountains, no rainforests, nothing like that. Um, so that kind of sucks, because you do want science. You can get science from the T, but you know, whatever. But so once we improve those, although we won't get the T in our opening, but we'll have some extra combat strength. And when your combat strength is only 28, extra combat strength is nice. So anyways, that is our opening turn. We'll put a cut in here. And uh, we'll come back with the rest of the, our, our opening here. So thanks for watching.